immediately, but not before Democrats and the so-called mainstream media went off the rails. In moments, we're going to show you just how insane and unhinged the left and the media has become. Even the president's 12-year-old son, a target of a repugnant attack, and we'll also reveal a blatant double standard in the media. In fact, the press gave a pass to the beloved Barack Obama, the anointed one, over his border tactics, including, you guessed it, separating children from their parents. We have the evidence tonight. And also, anti-Trump, deep state sycophant Peter Strzok, he is in huge trouble. Earlier, we reported that he was escorted out of the FBI headquarters. Well, next week, the disgraced FBI agent could be forced to testify before Congress. Bad news for Andrew McCabe, James Comey, and, yeah, even Robert Mueller and his witch hunters themselves. After all, Strzok is at the very center of what is a tangled web of nothing but corruption and extreme bias, oh, to influence a presidential election. Now, we're just at the precipice of the biggest scandal in modern political history. It's only getting started, right? We have a jam-packed edition. I know the president's not doing my hour tonight like Tucker. Um, of Hannity tonight. We begin with our important breaking news opening monologue. Now, the president's raucous rally that you saw right here on Fox just ended, but you wouldn't know it if you were watching the mainstream media. CNN, they barely covered it. And conspiracy TV, MSNBC, literally acted like it wasn't happening. Now, by the way, of course, we brought you the rally, including when the president took Democrats, the mainstream media, to task for their blatant hypocrisy over the topic of immigration. And one of the reasons the media didn't cover it, they would have been called out for all of their lies and the fact that they're missing the biggest story uh, in American history. Take a look. Democrats don't care about the impact of uncontrolled migration on your communities, your schools, your hospitals, your jobs or your safety. Democrats put illegal immigrants before they put American citizens. We've already started the wall. We got 1.6 billion. The wall has been started. San Diego and lots of different places. And we go, but boy, it's tough. They want to do anything they can to obstruct and to make sure it doesn't happen. But it's happening. It's happening. Now, for days, the so-called members of the press, the destroy Trump media, along with their friends in the Democratic Party, they have been in a complete, utter, insane meltdown over reports that children were being separated from parents at the border after being detained for crossing the border illegally. And I've said numerous times this week, no one ever wants to see, ever, a kid separated from their parents. Nobody wants to see that. And earlier today, and by the way, the president has been saying it all week, the president addressed this important issue, and he signed an executive order undoing their damage and ensuring that illegal immigrant families would be kept intact. By the way, not his law. He didn't pass it. Congress did. Another president signed it, but he fixed it. Take a look. Border security will be equal, if not greater, than previously. So we're going to have strong, very strong borders. But we're going to keep the families together. I didn't like the sight or the feeling of families being separated. Uh, there's a problem that's gone on for many years, as you know, through many administrations. And we're working very hard on immigration. It's been going on for 60 years. 60 years, nobody's taken care of it. Nobody's had the political courage to take care of it. But we're going to take care of it. So today, the president undid the damage Congress mandated and a previous president signed. Now, this order fills a void vacated by Congress, which has totally dropped the ball when it comes to both illegal immigration and legal immigration. Now it's time for these lazy, obstructionist members of Congress to step up and do their job. And that's a permanent solution. Fix our broken immigration system. And by the way, if we're going to do it, Let's do it right. If we're going to do it, every bill, any bill needs to literally point out what the president laid out. And by the way, go back to a State of the Union address. Secure the border, build the wall. The problem is solved completely, but it must be completely funded and constructed. And the money, well, I don't trust these guys. Get it up front or no deal. And by the way, all the loopholes have got to be closed that are used by criminals and terrorists and enemies of this country to ever enter the country. And that includes ending the visa lottery system. That includes ending catch and release of illegal immigrants. They'll never show up to court. Eliminating chain migration. 
And then, and only then, okay, the Democrats will win something too. They'll get their concessions on DACA. And by the way, the issue of child parent separation will end forever, something we all say we want. Now, the wall, the lotto system, the visa lottery, the end of catch and release, they can't be talking points. Congress, we're on to you, we're watching you. We know you often lie in your talking points and say one thing, and it never matches the fine print of the bill. So don't play these swamp games. The American people are now hip to your little lies. Everything that we're talking about needs to be straightforward, fully legislated, and enacted before any so-called DACA compromise. And now, without a wall, without border enforcement, well, the problems at the wall will never go away, ever. And sadly, that we're, you know, we have to see all of this through the prism of the midterm elections. Everything you're seeing and hearing from politicians and on these fake news networks is about 2018. And instead of passing legislation and permanently fixing a big problem for the country, immigration, well, you've got many Democrats. They'd rather use this issue to malign their political opponents and never solve the problem which fits perfectly into their brand of identity politics. They want the American people to believe, as they do every two to four years, Republicans are racist, they are sexist, they're misogynist, xenophobic, Islamophobic. Oh, and they want dirty air and water, and they want to kill your children and push your grandmother over a cliff. You hear those lies every two and four years. I played the history of this so many times on this show. Let me tell you the four things that will happen, by the way. You let Democrats win this election, this midterm, and guess what's going to happen? This is their agenda. Number one, they want to impeach the president, but they're not going to tell you that. They've told every Democrat, stop Maxine Waters from saying impeach 45. They want to do it, but they won't tell you. The rest of their agenda, they want open borders. They want to keep Obamacare. And just like Nancy Pelosi said, they want to roll back the tax cuts and steal those crumbs back, as she called them, that the president gave you in the tax cut bill. Now, earlier today, the president exposed what is the Democrats and the media's blatant hypocrisy. Look at the video that the president tweeted. This is kind of priceless. Take a look. Our immigration system is broken. Illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The people who should be here are those who come legally. We have to send a clear message. Just because your child gets across the border, that doesn't mean the child gets to stay. Oh, so the presidents and the Democrats and the media, they all play politics. Now, this president has vowed to fix the immigration crisis in this country. But that didn't stop your media from going completely off the rails insane. Listen to a clip. NBC News reporter Lester Holt interviewing a Border Patrol chief. This is outrageous. Watch this. You feel like the bad guy in this to some extent? I mean, you are the instrument of a policy that is obviously very controversial right now. A bad guy? Okay, Lester, maybe you ought to get out of that studio once in a while. I've been to the border 12 times, all across, Rio Grande to San Diego. I've been in the drug warehouses. I've been out when they have arrested gang members, and I've been out in the drug warehouses, floor to ceiling, all laid at the altar of going to our kids. Lester, no wonder why you're not number one in news anymore. You know what? Risking his life? Yeah, he's saving our kids from drugs and those people that have bad intentions that cross our open border. And it gets so much worse. We are talking about a full-on psychotic meltdown, Holocaust comparisons, some 22 of them, slavery comparisons. Well, you have to see it to believe it. Check out this insanity. Donald Trump, without a doubt, is pure evil. When you played the tapes of what was heard a couple of days ago in the centers, it's horrific. How can people do that? That, that hasn't happened in this country since the time of slavery. It hasn't happened in the world since the time of the Nazis. And Donald Trump is right there with them. This is as if George Wallace had won in 1968. The one through line here uh, from Charlottesville to this issue is, to use your phrase, a return to the most disturbing elements of white supremacy, white male supremacy to be precise, yeah. in the national character. Overnight, they've now created criminals. So people are trying to understand what's happening here, that's what happened. And you know what, Elie Wiesel, may he rest in peace, what he said to me was he said, you know, the Nazis had it perfectly correct. They declared us an illegal people. That's how it began. I don't want little children ripped 
from their parents' arms. I don't want them marched off to, quote, showers. When you look at this uh, historically throughout American history, no matter the policy you're talking about, the separation of families has always been something uh, that speaks uh, to a level of inhumanity. If you go back to, to slavery. By the way, liberal Joe thinks he's a conservative. Now, if you can believe it, the reaction from some on the left was even so much worse and so much more disgusting. Now, by the way, I have to warn you, you have kids at home, and I hate ever saying turn off the channel or just be careful. What I'm about to show you is not suitable for kids. Actor Peter Fonda, remember Hanoi Jane, brother of him, tweeted about Donald Trump's DHS secretary, uh, Kristen Nielsen. Kristen Nielsen is a lying bleep that should be put in a cage and poked at by passerbys. The bleep should be pilloried in Lafayette Square, naked, whipped by passerby while being filmed for posterity. And then he continued his rant. And this time, he turned his sick, twisted, ugly, vicious rage towards a 12-year-old kid. And by the way, the president and Melania Trump's son, Barron. We should rip Barron Trump from his mother's arms and put him in a cage with pedophiles and see if his mother will stand up against the giant bleep she is married to. 90 million people in the streets on the same weekend in the country bleep. Okay, disgusting. Now, rightfully, the first lady has every right to protect her child. And by the way, making terroristic threats against the first family, that's actually illegal. And she contacted the Secret Service after that horrible tweet. And Peter Fonda then, lately, perhaps sobered up, deleted the tweet, later apologized, saying in part he went too far. Peter, too far? Um, well, you could be arrested for those words, and frankly, you probably should be. And here's the big question of the day. Where's Nancy Pelosi? Where's Elizabeth Warren? Where is the champion of women, Hillary Clinton? Where is the outrage from the so-called compassionate left? Now, Peter's Fonda, Peter Fonda's comments are sick, twisted, ugly, demented, and this is the insanity coming from America's left. And it's, there's a lot more. Look at Occupy Wall Street, promoting the murdering of ICE agents. A member of Antifa publishing a list of 1,500 ICE agents' personal information, blasting it all over Twitter. They're going to get somebody killed here. This is not a game. And then this happened. Donald Trump's DHS secretary, Kristen Nielsen, who's following the laws of Congress, the laws of the land, literally is run out of a restaurant last night by a group of leftist protesters. And we have the video. Watch this left wing insanity. Nancy Pelosi, Elizabeth Warren, where are you? Where's the Me Too movement right now tonight? And the assault and the horrific, vicious things that are being said here. Which brings us to a very important point. While the left, the media literally blows up over the Trump administration's, quote, border tactics, and they're obeying the law, they were very quiet when Obama was their president. The images we're about to show you, take a look at this. Children in cages, sleeping in cages. Oh, without their parents being there at all. Many separated from their parents. These images, they weren't taken after Donald Trump was sworn into office. No, we checked it out today. The Daily Call printed a lot of these. This was under Barack Hussein Obama. Those pictures are from the Obama administration. And this is how they detain illegal immigrants and children. In fact, one such Obama-era policy actually detained minors without their parents four months before releasing them back to their home countries. And remember, it was President Obama who prosecuted, oh, nearly a half a million illegal immigrants, not Donald Trump. 
It was Obama who said he was merely enforcing the laws, laws that he alone can't change. And even if they create great damage, I, I, he's compelled to enforce the laws of Congress. Remember, he said all of this. There are those in the immigrants' rights community who have argued passionately that we should simply provide those who are illegally with legal status or at least ignore the laws on the books. But I believe such an indiscriminate approach would be both unwise and unfair. When I talk to immigration advocates, you know, they wish I could just bypass Congress and change the law myself. But that's not how democracy works. Believe me, the idea of, of doing things on my own is very tempting. <laughs> It, 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 I, I promise you, not, 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 just, not just on immigration reform. <laughs> but that's not, how, that's not how our system works. I'm the President of the United States. I'm not uh, uh, the Emperor of the United States. Uh, my job is to execute laws that are passed. My job to execute laws that are passed. I'm not the Emperor. Um, that's exactly, by the way, what Donald Trump signed today, let me be blunt. It'll last five minutes in a courtroom before it's thrown out, but at least gives Congress time to do their job. We're going to have more on immigration.